Hello and welcome to Midday Connection on April 3rd, uh, Monday of Holy Week uh, here at First Presbyterian Church of San Angelo. My name is Pastor Joel. And I'm Pastor Natalie. And we're going to endeavor this week to uh, do a Midday Connection uh, for Monday through Friday. Uh, it might happen, it might not, but uh, nonetheless, I think this is an excellent opportunity for us to remain in God's Word together and to uh, be preparing our hearts for uh, this most holy of weeks in the Christian calendar. Let me go ahead and open us in a word of prayer. Gracious Lord, we are grateful to you for your incredible love for us and how you have called each and every one of us to follow after you. I pray, Lord, that as we read your word today, that we would be inspired by it and transformed by it, that we would live lives uh, that are increasingly conformed to the image of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. This morning, we're starting with Psalm 119, and we've got a few verses, verses 73 through 80. Your hands have made and fashioned me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. Those who fear you shall see me and rejoice, because I have hoped in your word. I know, O Lord, that your judgments are right, and that in faithfulness you have humbled me. Let your steadfast love become my comfort according to your promise to your servant. Let your mercy come to me, that I may live, for your law is my delight. Let the arrogant be put to shame, because they have subverted me with guile, as for me. I will meditate on your precepts. Let those who fear you turn to me, so that they may know your decrees. May my heart be blameless in your statutes, so that I may not be put to shame. In Psalm 145, I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud, shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of all who fear him. He also hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him but all the wicked he will destroy. My mouth will speak the praise of the Lord, and all flesh will bless his holy name forever and ever. Our uh, prophetic word comes today from Jeremiah chapter 11, 18 through 20, and chapter 12, 1 through 17. It was the Lord who made it known to me, and I knew. Then you showed me their evil deeds. But I was like a gentle lamb led to the slaughter, and I did not know it was against me that they devised schemes, saying, Let us destroy the tree with its fruit. Let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will no longer be remembered. But you, O Lord of hosts, who judge righteously, who try the heart and the mind, let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause." You will be in the right, O Lord, when I lay charges against you, but let me put my case to you. Why does the way of the guilty prosper? Why do all who are treacherous thrive? 
You plant them and they take root. They grow and bring forth fruit. You are near in their mouths, yet far from their hearts. But you, O Lord, know me. You see me and test me. My heart is with you. Pull them out like sheep for the slaughter and set them apart for the day of slaughter. How long will the land mourn and the grass of every field wither? For the wickedness of those who live in it, the animals and the birds are swept away, and because people said, He is blind to our ways. If you have raced with footrunners and they have wearied you, how will you compete with horses? And how will you fare in the thickets of the Jordan? For even your kinsfolk and your own family, even they have dealt treacherously with you. They are in full cry after you. Do not believe them though you speak friendly words to you. I have forsaken my house. I have abandoned my heritage. I have given the beloved of my heart into the hands of her enemies. My heritage has become to me like a lion in the forest. She has lifted up her voice against me. Therefore, I hate her. Is the hyena greedy for my heritage at my command? Are the birds of prey all around her? Go, assemble all the wild animals. Bring them to devour her. Many shepherds have destroyed my vineyard. They have trampled down my portion. They have made my pleasant portion a desolate wilderness. They have made it a desolation. Desolate, it mourns to me. The whole land is made desolate, but no one lays it to heart. Upon all the bare heights and the desert, spoilers have come. For the sword of the Lord devours from one end of the land to the other. No one shall be safe. They have sown wheat and have reaped thorns. They have tired themselves out, but profit nothing. They shall be ashamed of their harvests because of the fierce anger of the Lord. Thus says the Lord concerning all my evil neighbors who touch the heritage that I have given my people Israel to inherit. I am about to pluck them up from their land, and I will pluck up the house of Judah from among them. And after I have plucked them up, I will again have compassion on them, and I will bring them again to their heritage and to their land, every one of them. And then, if they will diligently learn the ways of my people to swear by my name, as the Lord lives, as they taught my people to swear by Baal, then they shall be built up in the midst of my people. But if any nation will not listen, then I will completely uproot it and destroy it, says the Lord. And in the New Testament, Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 through 14. Finally, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is not troublesome to me, and for you it is a safeguard. Beware of the dogs, beware of the evil workers, beware of those who mutilate the flesh. For it is we who are the circumcision, who worship in the Spirit of God, and boast in Christ Jesus, and have no confidence in the flesh. Even though I, too, have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as lost because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish, in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own, because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead. Press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. And our gospel text today from John chapter 12, verses 9 through 19. 
When the great crowd of the Jews learned that Jesus was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. The next day, the great crowd that had come to the festival heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it, as it is written, Do not be afraid, daughter of Zion. Look, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first. But when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written of him and had been done to him. So the crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to testify. It was also because they heard that he had performed this sign that the crowd went to meet him. The Pharisees then said to one another, You see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. And back to our psalm, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. And our final psalm today is Psalm 6. O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger or discipline me in your wrath. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am languishing. O Lord, heal me, for my bones are shaking with terror. My soul also is struck with terror, while you, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, save my life. Deliver me for the sake of your steadfast love. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In Sheol, who can give you praise? I am weary with my moaning. Every night I flood my bed with tears. I drench my couch with my weeping. My eyes waste away because of grief. They grow weak because of all my foes. Depart from me, all you workers of evil, for the Lord has heard the sound of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord accepts my prayer. All my enemies shall be ashamed and struck with terror. They shall turn back and in a moment be put to shame. These are the words of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Well, since we're going to be doing, uh, hopefully, every day a Midday Connection during Holy Week, we are not going to do uh, a really extended time in our text today. I think it's a very important thing to be reading God's Word and to just let that be a part of our week um, as we are continuing to prepare ourselves. This is the last week of Lent, um, and obviously, um, uh, Holy Week, there's a lot of things going on. Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and then obviously Easter Sunday. Um, with a lot of things going on. But um, I think one of the things that is interesting about these texts is they continue that story that God is telling um, about how all of the prophecies and all of the Psalms are pointing forward to what Jesus is going to do during this time. Right. Um, this, uh, this John passage, John chapter 12, um, uh, David Welch preached um, on this chapter yesterday in our in our services, and if you have not seen David's uh, sermon from yesterday, please go please go listen to it. It's a really wonderful sermon. He did a great job on this text, so I'm not going to try to repeat what he talked about yesterday. Right. Um, right. But this whole idea that here is Jesus coming into this place where. Um, the, the prophecies from Jeremiah, even, um, you know, God created the vineyard, yet they've trampled down the, the vintage, um, uh, where here is Jesus now coming in to fulfill these things. And what we see again is people misunderstanding what's going on. Uh, right. Some people kind of getting a little glimpse of it and some people just kind of ignoring it. But this, this line here at the end where uh, here is Lazarus who's been raised from the dead and rather than a celebratory thing, 
um, even new life coming from death, how that becomes uh, an impetus or a reason for these people who are of, of high religious stature and now they want to kill Jesus. But there's this weird line there at the end. Uh, the Pharisees then said to one another, you see, you can do nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. Um, there's, there's an acknowledgement even that what God is doing is beyond their capacity, uh, but, they don't, but they don't see it as a work of God. They see right. it as a threat right. to there's their own power. There's this source of contention. There's this competition. Yeah. This, yeah. this, we can't do this. So rather than, like you said, celebrate, tear it down. Right. Go after it. Isn't that the strangest thing? Um, the, the jealousy or the contention. Um, and, and I wonder sometimes if, if we, and, and again, David touched on this a little bit, but uh, the, the Pharisee that lives within all of us, right? You know, we think that um, here are the ways that I want my religious thing to go. Right. And if it fits within my little box of which I control, I can even allow a little mystery on either end, you know, kind as of stuff. As long as it's As long still... as the majority of it is in the box. Right. Um, you know, how often well, do we do that? Right. Well, even here at the beginning, you know, that... Um... The chief priest planned to put Lazarus to death, Lazarus to death as well, because mm -hmm. the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. And yet you have these Pharisees, these religious leaders that are know the Old Testament, that are pointing to Jesus. Lazarus is doing exactly what Old Testament points to, but because it is a threat and it doesn't, just like David talked about, it doesn't look like what we thought it should look like. Mm -hmm. And because it wasn't, it's like, well, that's not my idea, so I can't get on board with that. I can't get on board with that. And that it's... It's mind-boggling yes, it in a way. It is but bizarre. how often do we do... How often, how do, often we do, do we do that? the same things? Um, and so, uh, not, not again trying to belabor the point or anything, but jumping back to Jeremiah mm -hmm. and... And here is Jeremiah who's hearing the word of the Lord and he's presenting it to the people and all of the anger and the animosity that comes against Jeremiah where all Jeremiah is trying to do is to call people back to the original intent of right. God. You know, love God, love your neighbor, do all these things. They're all there in the Old Testament and they're not doing it. In fact, they're coming against Jeremiah with this, their, their intent is to kill him. Right. And then Jeremiah cries out in chapter 12, verses 1 through 4. Uh, Jeremiah is complaining to God, why do the wicked prosper? Isn't that a question that we often ask ourselves? We can look around at things in the world and we can think, well, those people aren't really being righteous. But yet they're successful or they everything seems they have, seem to have their life together. You know, I, I'm over here struggling, and I'm trying to do the right thing, and then there's people that don't care, and right, right. I think, I think that happens. They're popular. Often. They're pretty. They're wealthy. They're connected. They're all doing the the fun things. They're posting it on Facebook and Instagram right. and all these things, and everybody else is looking at it, going, but but they don't live righteous lives. Right. Uh, but but gosh, look how it appears to work out. Right. Um, and, and then it goes, and then uh, God's response in chapter and verses uh, 5 through um, that 17, I guess, all of these things, like, well, well Jeremiah, um, you know, what, do, what did you think was going to happen? Right. Did you think that you could preach my word and everything was going to be, you know, rivers of chocolate and butterflies? Or is it going to be, right. um, yeah, even your own family is coming against you, and there's going to be problems, but, uh, but God is working his will to bring about his glory. Um, and I think that that bumps us back to, back the, to the, the Philippians absolutely. passage for sure. Right. Um, what a great passage. And and, hmm. and I think as we go, as here we are at the beginning of Holy Week. And we are, you know, you've got the triumphal entry of Jesus coming into Jerusalem, the waving of palms, all of this. Whether they knew what they were, you know, you've got this weird mix of people that do get it, don't get it, but it's this celebra celebratory time. And we end up at the end of the week um, with the torture and the killing of Jesus. And this is, of course, then written after Jesus is resurrected. And so it's looking back. But as we look at, as we go through Holy Week, and how do we look at, how do we, how do we prepare our hearts? How are we 
um, we are still in Lent. How are we still looking to God? And, you know, how often as people do we we give our resume? Mm -hmm. And this is Paul saying, here's my resume. And it means nothing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jesus went to that cross not because we can, not because Paul could give a resume, not because we can give a resume, none of that. He gave gave his life because he loved us right. and he was righteous mm -hmm. and so we find our righteousness in him not because of and so I think it's important that we we look at that and we take that posture and we say you know like I said we are still here in Lent we are still um, looking at that that connection and, and how can we examine ourselves and how can we look within ourselves and see where we're at I think that we need to get rid of the resume sometimes mm -hmm. and but yet that's I think that is so often we look at ourselves as that you know mm -hmm. having one about to be a senior and I know your kids have been in college but yeah filling out those college applications and filling out any type of application. It's, Where are you ranked? Where, what's right, you going to do? Right, right. But look at what I've done. Look at what I've done. Check, 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 check. You can check all the boxes. Mm -hmm. You can say, I've done all the things. I've accomplished all the things. Look at me, look at me, look at me. Hmm. And that happens, you know, in that setting. But how often do we believe that those boxes that we're checking off are who we are? Hmm. Because that, as Paul says, means nothing. I think, and Natalie, so, you, you, you've moved from uh, you know, preaching to meddling, as they say, right? <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> it's like, oh, well, here we go, okay, right? Well, oh. it's, yeah. And we're going to finish it up. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go ahead and wrap that up because that's <laughs> dipping into dangerous territory, right? Because right. It's, it's true. This is what Paul is describing here is how the world always operates. Right. Look at me. I measure up. I'm better than other people. Um, or at the very least, holding my own. But you know, but Paul right. is Paul has the perfect resume mm -hmm. from from a from a Jewish perspective in the first century. You know, and and I'm sure each and every one of us has our own understanding of of what is. You know, it. it I know we need to wrap up, but it, it harkens back to like remember that uh, a couple of years ago when all those you know rich, well connected people were were like lying and cheating to try to get their own kids into the the appropriate college right. and stuff, or the one that they want. And you're like, wait, wait, you've you've got everything, yet you still don't have enough, right? And and it's fascinating for everybody else who tries to play by the rules. But again, what does Paul say? The rules are totally different. What is of value? What is lasting? What is going to be that which saves is, is emptying ourselves like Jesus did, right. becoming more like Jesus, sharing in his sufferings. This doesn't mean working hard is a bad thing. It doesn't right. mean extracurriculars are bad. Things. Not it does, bad. Right. But in comparison to Jesus, all of the things that we're aiming towards have to be found in him. And it's of a complete different from how the world wants it to be done. Right. And it's and it's a challenge even for those of us who have been in the church for a really long time. Um, right. How do we count everything that we've done as insignificant compared to garbage even, compared to what Jesus has done and right. is doing in our lives? Right. Um, you know, the, the Jeremiah and the Philippians passage, it's just like God is working this stuff out for Jeremiah's good, even though it doesn't right. look like that from Jeremiah's perspective, and right. God is using all these things in Paul's life for Paul's good, according to the will of the will of Jesus, right? Well, and I know we have to wrap up, but one last thing. One last thing. One last Bring thing. it in there. But I also think that it's important to hear this too, because even if you don't have this resume, yes, Christ died for you too. Amen. This week, as we lead up to Easter week. You don't have to have that resume because, okay, you have the resume. It means nothing. I died for you because I love you. I died for you to offer you salvation and righteousness and justification. I died for you for that. What if you don't have the resume? Guess what? I still died for you wow. for salvation and justification and righteousness. Right. Because that doesn't hold any weight. Mm -hmm. In that, I mean, there's no, there's no value there. So. Amen. Right. Yeah, again, well, you went from preaching to meddling back to preaching. So. <laughs> right. Awesome. Okay. Okay. I think, I think we're done. All right.
So, yeah, we can close in prayer, but we'll, yeah. Okay. Hopefully see you guys tomorrow. Yeah, see you right. guys tomorrow. We'll do this again. So, all right. Gracious Lord, thank you for your words to us today. I pray that as we as we finish out Lent, that we do keep our eyes on you. We do keep our hearts um, open to what it is that you would have us to hear, and that we do we see you, we follow you, that we find joy in the suffering, that we recognize that it is truly you who did the work. It is truly you where we find our value and that we find our worth and that we feel um, encouraged and lifted up by that. And in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Take care. Bye-bye.